Because you have done this evil one, you and the woman will be enemies of each other, and her offspring will crush your head. Because you have done this, you shall suffer even in your childbearing. You shall give birth to your children in pain. Because you have done this, with sweat on your brow you shall eat your bread until you return to the clay from which you came. The Lord Yahweh has given me a prophet's tongue. The people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. The people who live in a land of shadow, a light has dawned. The Lord Yahweh will give you a sign. It is this. A maiden is with child and soon will give birth to a son whom she will call Emmanuel, a name which means God is with us. Did one of you... Did 
One of you call my name. Lama? Lama, call your name. Shaket. Ani oleket la baita. Gemeni. Ani po. Yala. Ken ken yala. Yes. Well, not so much afraid. Puzzled. What does all this mean? What did you say? Me. God loves me that much. A son. But how? How? I am a virgin and I promise God. A son of God. No earthly father. Holy Spirit. I see. I understand. Whatever God wants of me. Whatever God wants, and tell him thanks. child is born to us, a son is given to us, wide will his dominion be in a peace that has no end.
Gentle lady, kind sir, may I be allowed to hold the baby just for a minute? I am a father, I am a grandfather. My name is Simeon. I shall be careful. These arms have held their share of babies, but none so precious as this. With my own eyes, I can see the child that will bring you salvation. In my own arms, I hold the child that shall bring glory to all Israel. I 
and his star shall shine throughout the earth and the heavens as a light to all nations. This is a precious burden ye both shall carry. Our son Jesus, he is destined for all these great things, you say? Truly, this baby will bring joy to my people. I ask only of the Lord that he be healthy and honest. Yet, he will provoke anger in the hearts of many, and he shall cause you great pain too, and sorrow like a sharp sword shall pierce your very soul. Lord, you have kept your promise to me that I should not die until I have seen your salvation. Now let my promise to you be fulfilled. Grant me the days and the years to see the fulfillment of this child's promise. I know not what it shall be or where it shall lead, but my promise to you be that I be spared to set down what I see, what I hear, what is done as a testament to all nations. So be it. The visitors are here, my Lord Herod. Show them in. Salutations, my Lord Herod. From our masters to your majesty, we bring greetings and gifts appropriate to your exalted station. You are welcome, gentlemen, to my court. See that they are well provided for after their long journey. Alas, Majesty, our journey, it is not over. Not over, you see. We seek the baby born to be king of the Jews. Born to be king of the Jews, you see. We saw his dad in the east, and we have come to worship him. Have you now? And we bring him gifts of gold, for truly he must be a king. A king, you say? Frankincense, for he is the Holy One. The Holy One, you say? And mere, because although as God he lives, as man he must die. Truly, I have not heard of this king. I pray you, go on your way with all haste. Make a careful search for this child, and when you have found him, let me know, so that I too may go and worship him.
if this child, if this child should not reach manhood, then so shall I remain king of the Jews. and loud lamenting Rachel weeping for her children refusing to be comforted because they are no more for years I had heard nothing nothing of nothing of this wondrous God child had I been mistaken was it the imaginings of an old man? Twelve years, I had all but given up hope. When one day, during the Passover in the temple, these old eyes witnessed something they had not seen before. Joseph, we were beside ourselves with worry. You should have said. How could you have treated us this way? Why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be busy with the concerns of my father? His father's business. It wasn't from timber and sawdust he learned such wisdom. I knew I had found my Lord again. I could rest easy. has come. The Son of Man has come. The eyes of the blind shall see the day. The ears of the deaf will be opened. Turn away from your sins. Be baptized.
The day of the Lord has come. I will hear upon the mountains the feet of him who will be savior of the world. And God will forgive you your sins. The newborn child shall put his hand into the dragon's lair. He shall lead the lions by its manes. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, turn to the Lord your God. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Are you the Messiah? No, I am not the Messiah. Who are you then? After me shall come another, mightier than I. And when he comes, when he comes, the solitary places will be glad. They shall blossom like the lily. Are you Elijah? No, I am not. Are you the prophet? No, no, no! Then tell us who you are! After me shall come another, mightier than I, someone whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. Who is this man? Repent! Repent ye, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Are you the one for whom we wait? No, no, I am not. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Rabbi, should it not be you who baptizes me? This is my own dear son, my chosen one. Listen to him.
I've never seen so many fish James in a single hole. Peter, the nets were bursting. They wouldn't take any more. I, I can't figure it out. We spent the whole night fishing that area. And what we caught would scarce feed a cat. I don't understand it at all. There's your answer, Andrew. He's your answer. The preacher? Oh, he's more than a preacher, John. Much more. It was he who told me to put the nets down again. We all thought you'd lost your wits, Peter. Putting out again after a long night. But look at the results. Have you ever seen such a catch? Go with me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. Don't be afraid, Simon. Follow me, and I will make you fishermen of people. Good day to you. What's good about it? Tell me that. And tell me something else while you're at it. Where will I get people to man my boat? All my life I've been a fisherman. Had a good trade. Two boats. We sent fish to the four corners of the empire. Now my business is in ruins. Are the fish not running for you, Zebedee? There's not the fish that are running. Nothing wrong with the fish. But who will I get to fish them? Well, you know, I thought your two sons, James and John, two good lads. I've lost them. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Drowned, were they? Ah, drowned be damned. <laughs> they just walked out. Oh, did you have a row? Maybe you were uh, paying them too little. Maybe you worked them too hard. I told you, they just walked out. He just said to them, follow me. And without a buy or leave, they dropped everything and followed him. Followed who? The Nazarene, the one that I call Jesus. He is here. Jesus is here. <laughs> he has been and gone. <laughs> and Simon gone with him. And James and John, and God knows how many more. The boats abandoned on the lake shore. The nets neither sorted, nor hung out, nor repaired. What am I to do? What sort of man is this that can command the loyalty of others? What sort of a man is it that would throw up his job to follow an itinerant preacher, huh? <laughs> but that is your greatest blessing. Your two sons called by the master. Will the master put food on my table? Will he provide a fortune for my daughter? Will he look after me in my old age? The Lord can provide. The Lord will provide. Enough of your pious ramblings, old man. I have to pick up the pieces of my business.
God save you, sir. Are you also looking far to see? These eyes have seen the world, my friend. The good and the bad. No, I'm not asking that they see it again. But this man can lift the veils of blindness from the soul, can cast light into the darkened corners of the mind. Do you think that blindness is of the eyes only? No. There is a blindness of the mind. The blindness of doubt to the goodness of God. The blindness that blights love and compassion. The blindness of ignorance. Tell me, friend, what color is your face? Like paper that has been left too long in the sun. And, and where do you come from? From Jerusalem. Does it matter to me what color your face is? No. Does it matter to me where you come from? No. What matters is how much love is in your heart. Take my arm, friend, and lead me. For I fear that we are the blind in this world. We are the ones who need our eyes opened. Take in in one go. What, what was it he said first? How happy are the poor? And the downcast. The humble. These are the people the Lord will free when the day comes. They shall receive riches in heaven, Judas. Comfort and deep satisfaction. How happy are those that are good, he said. People who show mercy. People who are pure. People, people who work for peace. People who were victimized. It's a tall order. I suppose he means after an enemy is defeated. I don't think that was what he meant. I think it was. The day when the Messiah shall lead Israel to victory and the nations which suppressed us should bow beneath our feet and Israel shall rule gloriously. Oh, get off the soapbox, Judas. Did he not charge us to love and pray for our enemies? <laughs> pray for the Romans? Aye. Even the Romans. Remember that God our Father makes the sun shine and the rain fall on good people and bad people alike. And the high priests with their money and their big houses and their gorgeous robes. What about them, eh? As you judge others, so you yourself shall be judged. Do you remember when he said that? Why do you go around pointing out other people's faults when your own are even bigger? Ah, I'll leave you to it. I'm in charge of the purse. I've got to get money from somewhere to pay for you lot, eating and drinking. Don't worry about food or drink. Life is too important to worry about these things. God cares about the flowers and the fields and the birds in the air, so he's able to look after you two. Remember he told us that? Didn't he? He taught them many things that day. There was so much to take in. New ideas, new thoughts. Everywhere you went, 
people talked about this man and his ideas. But there were some who looked with suspicion upon them. In very truth, the kingdom is at hand. This time, Simon, Barabbas, this time the Romans will be overthrown. The Nazarene is not one of us, Judas. But Barabbas, he talks of the coming of a new kingdom, a new order. And we shall live to see that day, Simon. The day when usurpers are driven from our country. When we shall no longer feel a jackboot of a farm power on our necks. Think of it, Simon. Our own country. The kingdom of Israel. The priests do not like what the master is saying. The other day, in the synagogue at Nazareth, when he stood up to read, what did he choose? The Isaiah. You know the text, Simon. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has chosen me to bring the good news to the poor. He has sent me... To proclaim liberty to the captives, yes? And recovery of sight to the blind. To set free the oppressed, and announce that the time has come... When the Lord will save his people. Don't you see, Barabbas, Simon, all of you? This is our creed. This is our man. We have no armies. Most of us don't even carry a sword. He who can command the winds and the seas, who can fetch miracles, what need has he of a sword? I'm not convinced. Maybe this is our man. Maybe. Maybe not. Follow him, Judas. You too, Simon. Watch him. Report back to us. I don't trust Judas. Dangerous people. Barabbas and Judas and the rest of the Sicarii, the knife carriers, the zealots. Well, the zealots would have been delighted if the crowd's enthusiasm for Jesus led to an uprising against the Romans. But the kingdom that Jesus sought to establish was not of this earth. He came to purify Israel, but not with sword and fire. Ah, yes. People like Barabbas and Judas saw the leader in him, but many more saw him as a threat. My Lord Annas, Jesus has said that unless a man is born again with water and the Spirit, he can never enter God's kingdom. Now what kind of mumbo-jumbo is this? You know, I'm surprised this takes in the decent people of this city who are no fools. He also said that God did not send his Son into the world to condemn people but to give them life and hope. Is he now claiming to be the son of God? He heals the sick. He is a good man. He is a dangerous man. Those whose hearts are pure have nothing to fear. This Jesus needs to be watched carefully. It's already taken care of. We should also keep an eye on Nicodemus. I had to smile the day that James and John told me the story. A sower set out one day to set some seed on his land. And with his back to the wind, he threw it in great sweeping circles. And the seed fell where it would, on the soil beneath.
are we expecting, Martha? The master, Simon, Peter, Andrew, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, and what's the name of that tax collector? Matthew. Good looking young fella. For a tax collector, that is. Thomas, and the earnest one. Oh, James. The same. And there's the other two, Simon the Zealot and Judas Iscariot. What are the likes of them doing following the master? Cutthroats, terrorists. My husband says they're being watched. Uh, Judas and Simon. But they're too serious. You can't have a laugh with them like you can with the others. <laughs> Jesus chose Judas the same way as he chose the rest of them. I'm not saying they're not sincere. They are. They're as dedicated as the rest, I'm sure. Which reminds me. I've collected some money for Judas. I took a collection among the women at the Tetrax Palace. I see him coming now. Head down, shoulders hunched. Judas, all right. The weight of the world on his shoulders. <laughs> Wait till you hear it going on about how much we spend. Do we really need so much bread? And isn't that wine a bit expensive? <laughs> Shh, he'll hear you. Judas, peace be with you. Peace be with you, Magdalene. Uh, the Lord will be delayed. There are thousands down by the lakeside. All is ready for him. Do we really need so much bread? <laughs> and isn't this wine a bit expensive? <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny? All this has to be paid for, you know? Don't worry, Judas. I've collected some money for you. It should more than cover it. For the general purse. children. The master is tired and we've a long way to go. Don't be bothering him now. Away with you now like good little children. Let the children come to me. Do not stop them. I assure you, unless you change and become like one of these, you will not enter my father's kingdom. He was so natural, so direct. No big words, no lofty arguments, just simple, direct. Just like the prayer he taught them that day. The only prayer necessary, he said.
What he said was so different. Forgive us as we forgive others. That was new. Here, if somebody crossed you, you were expected to demand revenge, an eye for an eye and all to that. But here was somebody saying, do good to your enemies. Be patient with those who hurt you. Love and forgiveness. That was new, even revolutionary. I remember a story he told about a Samaritan which nearly caused a stand-up fight among his followers. Now let's get this straight. This man is going on a long journey. From Jerusalem to Jericho, to be precise. And he takes a shortcut through a dry wadi in bandit country. Of course, he's set upon, robbed and beaten. And left for dead on the side of the road. He's one of our own, a Jew, right? Right. So, one of the priests comes along. He sees the wounded man, but he doesn't stop. He doesn't want to get involved. Who would? Would any of you? No. no. So, no. so he passes by. Then, one of the temple priests, a Levite, comes along. Don't tell us. He keeps going. What to expect? So, this is when the story becomes complicated. A Samaritan comes along. And you know what we think of that lot. We hate them. They hate us also. So, this Samaritan comes along. He sees the unfortunate man on the ground. And although he's busy, he stops. Stops and looks after your man on the ground. A Samaritan? Can you beat that? Yeah. He fixes him up until he is better, puts him up at lodgings, and, wait for this, he pays for him. So what is the master telling us in that story? Is he telling us that we must put aside centuries of animosity and hatred and look on these others as our neighbours? That's what he said. It's a tall order. It's not it's easy. Nobody said it was going to be easy. To love your neighbour, yes. But to love somebody who has a different skin, from a different country. That takes real courage. Well, if he keeps up with this kind of teaching, you can bet your life he'll get into trouble. Judas, you've been very quiet. What do you think? I'm more concerned with the day-to-day -day affairs of the group. You see this denarius, you don't come by this easily. It has to be worked for, right? I know, I've worked hard all my life. And I left my mother and my father and my kin to follow the master. As did we all. I hear a but in your voice, Judas. I would still die for that man because I believe in him deeply, fiercely. I still hear that but, Judas. Out with it, Judas. Remember that story he told about the workers in the vineyard? I do. I do, Faith. I see what's eating you. I... I don't think I remember that one. Of course you do. Didn't we argue about it all day? Owner of a vineyard hires some workers to gather in the grapes. Early in the morning, he hires a group to work the day. At midday, he decides he needs more workers, so he hires some more. Likewise, towards the end of the day, he hires the last lot to tidy up. Then the foreman begins to pay them. And that's the bit that gives me the trouble. He pays them all exactly the same. One denarius a man. Whether they worked all the blistering day or the last cool hour. One denarius. Now, what's fair about that? Where's the justice in that? But Judas, they all agreed on the rate when they were hired. That was the contract. One denarius. It was his wish to give exactly the same amount to those he hired at the end of the day exactly the same that he gave to the rest. And you're all still missing the point. This story is not about who gets what. Tell me, how does the master begin his story? Well, how does it begin? As if it made a difference? Oh, it makes a difference, all right. It starts, and these are the master's words. 
for the kingdom of heaven is like this. Once there was a man who set out early in the morning. You see? No, I don't see. I suppose, like all his stories, it means something else. The story is not about workers treading grapes. It's about the kingdom of heaven. And how does it end? So, the last shall be first. And the first last. That's what it's all about. God's boundless generosity. God's acceptance of all comers, early or late. Good news for the sinners amongst us. Jesus had another story about a father and his two sons. The younger son, up and left, one day walked out, demanded his share of the inheritance from his father, and headed off.
That was another thing about the master. It didn't seem to matter what your past was. He leaves the past dead, dead and gone, the minute you turn for home. And the talk and the arguments went on, wondering and worrying about what he meant. But slowly dawning on their hearts and in their minds was the awesome secret of who he really was. It began to dawn on them what was going to happen. Oh, he told them over and over again, but they either didn't believe him or, more probably, didn't want to believe him. I knew, I knew in my woman's heart why Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. My heart is breaking. I knew he was going to Jerusalem to die. Go into the village up ahead, he said. There you will find a young ass colt. Untie it and bring it to me. He will ride on a donkey. In wartime, the king rode on a horse. But in times of peace, the king rode on a donkey. I love this man. The time is now. The place is Jerusalem. My master shall lead us into the new kingdom. Hail to the king. 